Today on The Grid, we're talking about etiquette for photographers and how not to get punched on a photo shoot. We're going to look at my first fashion shoot using the Photo B1Xs. we got some cool giveaways, including an amazing think tank bag, and it all starts in just 60 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Westcott. Check out their new rapid box switch. It has nine light modifiers and 13 quick swap light inserts. Check it out right now at fjwestcott.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Enter their contest. You might win a Profoto B1 kit worth over $2,800. And Platinum. Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby, and I am joined by Mr. Eric, the real rocket man, Kuna. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Hi, Mr. Kuna. Yeah, it's going good. Going Back good. from your trip, he was out in Denver? Yeah, Denver, Colorado. Cruising around in a... In a you rented a Tesla Model 3? I did. You I did. dog. How'd you like it? It's awesome. It's is it as good car. as people say, or yeah. is it is it really well, good? Well, it was huh? one of those things where I rented it through Turo because it was like, it was $130 to run a Ford Fusion, and I was like, I could rent 20 oh, bucks more, I could get a 20 bucks. Tesla. I was like, yeah, I'm going to try that. So I did a photo shoot with it and everything. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some of your shots. Dude, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you've been drinking. Your photography is really doing good. So excuse me while I'm getting kind of... Speaking kinda, of photography. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna talk to you. You're getting pretty good, too. Well, thank, you're very kind. Thank <laughs> you. Um, so I want to... Uh, we, we, our, our topic today, of course, is, is going to be etiquette for photographers mm -hmm. so we, we have we have some interesting things to talk about that's going to be the second and third segment of the show today and of course we want to take your comments and things because we are live and we want to hear from you and some of your experiences uh, but we're going to start off with something uh different i do want to mention that we have a great giveaway so i want to show you that first we have lots of giveaways but today we have a special giveaway right down here Watch this monolith as it rises up. Dun 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 dun. Think tank, think tank bag. Look at this. It's so big it covers and fills the entire screen. Yes, we are giving yeah, away this bed boy. That's a that's a this is city a, walker. The, I do. I street have this. Street walker. Two street walker backpack it's a naughty name for a fantastic backpack anyway it is normally 240 bucks but we're going to give one away to someone watching the show today because because we can so <laughs> thank because you to our think friends tank at think tank makes great bags they make amazing bags all right in fact can i just give myself a plug yeah so tomorrow i'm going to show well tomorrow not tomorrow but i'm taping a class tomorrow on uh, on travel photography, but let me tell you what it is. It's not what you think. It's called How to Travel Right. So it's not about taking photos. Mm -hmm. It's about my travel workflow. Because I get so many questions about, like, what kind of bag do you take? How do you pack it? What things do you put in it? And one of the things we're doing tomorrow, we're mounting a camera up in the yeah. roof. And I'm going to show how I pack my bag, what I take with me, how I do my backups at night, how I do my backups when I get home. The whole, all of the stuff that's not actually taking the picture, that's one of my classes tomorrow. Yeah, and I think what's cool about it is you called it uh, how to travel right, right? Right. Because it's not how to travel light, because certain times you're going to go into it, you want to travel with the intent of shooting photographs. I'm doing both. And you're doing both. I'm so doing both. Great. So it's I'm, like, it's yep. going to be for all people. Yep, so if you're going for a photo trip, We'll talk about that. If you're going yeah, on a family vacation. I think that's awesome. And you have to travel really light. Yeah. I got great tricks for traveling light. So it's a, it's for everybody. I'm also yep. going to show you how I pack my own luggage. So I'm bringing my luggage in. <laughs> it's going to be a weird class. <laughs> but I think I, I just get so many questions about it that yep. I, I want to talk to you about it. Okay. So give me a second here. <laughs> that's screwy here. One moment. Well, Don't... let's go through some hellos. We got uh, yeah, say hi to some Becky folks. G is saying uh, hello from the very hot Goodyear, Arizona. And then Andy's saying... Good evening from Otley, UK. And then uh, Deb saying, hey, Scott and Eric from a sizzling hot uh, California. Uh, or is that Canada? I don't know. Is um, it CA? Yes. It's someplace. Yeah, so someplace. And then uh, Kevin Scott saying, hi, it's Scott and Eric from Wisconsin. Cheeky Nando's in the house. He's saying Cheeky hello. Cheeky Nando in the um, house. Michael Greaves is saying hello from uh, Bedfordshire. 
And then Wayne's from uh, New Zealand saying hi. So all right, all the gang's the all here. Good to see you guys from all over checking in. So I, I want to tell you my story here. So last Friday, mm -hmm. I got uh, the opportunity to do my first shoot uh, with my Pro Photo gear. So I've got Pro Photo B1s and I have D1s as well. And mm -hmm. I, I've been using them here, like in house in the studio, but mm -hmm. like the B1s were born for location yeah, shooting. Yeah, exactly. And so I kind of wanted to save it up for where I could do something with Calibra and we could do something together. So we went to, we, we rented a theater. It's, it's now an event space. It used to be the, an old theater back in the days in Tampa. It's called the Rialto Theater. Mm -hmm. They have actually a very reasonable price for renting it for photo shoots. We rented it for the day. We found an awesome model from New York City. And uh, we put together this this whole shoot, and I, I did a Spark page about it. I, I just I just released it, so I'll I'll, I'll kind of take you through the Spark page here in just a second. But I want to show you uh, the finals, and I'll and I'll take you through the Spark page in just a second. So the the image. Let me kind of clear off my screen here and get rid of some of this junk. One second here. Oh, I'm not in control room two. Thank you, Juan. Juan just yelled out, as yeah. Juan will tend to do. Yeah, control room us. two. You gotta show us. All right, let me just go to, hold on, my oh, screen's resize, now a weird size. Resize. Hang on, hang on. Oh, going south. goodness grace, hang, hang on. There you go. Is that right? No. No, yeah. no that's right. Wait, wait, I, gotta, I think I got to do this now. Yeah. Oh, wait. It, it's resized for, hey, just give me a second. Eric, stall yes. real quick. So it resized for the airplay, right? So. Right, and it, it made it a weird size. But yeah, so you started, you, well, you started using the V1s just a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, and so I wanted to do something like really fun and really, you know, get 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 some real use out of them. So I kind of was saving up for this like one, right. one shoot. So I'll show you one of the finals. Here we go. Here's one of the finals. It's going to look kind of small on screen. So the idea, you have to read it. I'll read you what the idea was. But so Calibra came up with the story. She did all of the art direction and creative direction. And she is so much fun to work with. She's so much fun on the set. And it's neat to see her idea come to life. So mm -hmm. what she does is she comes up with, with the idea. And this, I'll just briefly, I'll tell you the idea is uh, it was a bird in a cage that is trapped in this cage and seeing everyone live this luxurious and happy life while they're trapped in a cage. And then the bird finally realized its dream of becoming a human and took human form and kind of wrecked the place, of course, when they burst out of the cage. Right. So that's why there's stuff kind of laying around and all that. So it's a feather dress uh, made by an incredible uh, designer uh, that's here in our area. And, and we saw her dress and Calibra built the story from that. But so what Calibra does is she puts together the team, like who's going to do the hair, who's going to do the makeup, and then what it's yeah. going to look like. Like she And then says, you, you broke that all down on your Spark page. Yeah, too. I went through all this yeah. on my Spark page, so I'm not going to go into great detail. I also have a behind the scenes video I'm going to show you. But so one of the things that I knew going into this that I wanted to do was do what I call a pullback. And I don't know what the official name is, so I'm calling it a pullback. It's where, you, so I showed you the shot that, that we went to get, but the pullback is where you actually step back a little further and you can see like the light stands and the light positioning. But yeah. it, but, and it is a behind the scenes shot, but you finish it and color grade it like it's a final shot. Yeah. So let me show you that one. Whoops, I just hit the wrong button here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's this button, not that. There we go. So this is the pullback shot where you can see the light stands and the backdrops and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, so I see the you had the pro one pro photo above and yep. then one pro photo to the right. There. Yeah, so I've got a five foot octa straight over her head and that's the main light. And then I've got a fill light with a giant, I mean a very, very, very large umbrella no diffusion or anything, just putting in fill for the rest of the set. Now, those backdrops, the backdrops are the first time I've gotten to use these as well. I've been saving this all up because of Photoshop mm -hmm. World and everything. I haven't had a chance to, to right. be shooting, but those are from Gravity Backdrops. So let me tell you how I found about Gravity Backdrops. There's this company that does the backdrops for like Annie Leibovitz and all these, and I'm like, mm -hmm. where do you find backdrops like that? Well, I found them there in New York City. You know what they cost? Like twenty five hundred dollars a backdrop, but like mm. two thousand and three thousand. I'm like, I'm not gonna spend three thousand dollars on a. That's what a light, a really good light costs. <laughs> I'm not gonna. So anyway, I'm reading in the in this article about this company that does it, and somebody in the comment says, Hey, there's this company in Europe that that makes backgrounds just like that. But instead of having to rent them, by the way, those ones in New York, they're so expensive, you rent them by the day. It's like 750 bucks a day. Instead, I found this company. They're called Gravity Backdrops. They're in Europe. 
oh my gosh, their stuff is amazing and it's a third the price. You can own it instead of renting it. Yeah, so, so you own it for the price of just yeah, renting it. Yeah, you own it for, for the day. price of renting it. So uh, anyway. That's cool. So they're, yeah, their stuff is crazy. Anyway, so um, I found them. And so that's what we got. And by the way, you can see, if you look in the picture, do you notice there's two backdrops? That's mm -hmm. that's another big thing besides the pullback is is staggering them and, and seeing the seam and all that's part of the look. So if you see a seam, you're like, oh my gosh, there's a seam. That's a very contemporary look. Now, so we go through all this. Yeah, definitely. Meet uh, and, yeah. and and I'm, I'm with my assistant. Uh, Julio's helping me on the set. He's my first assistant. And mm -hmm. I said, Julio, let's let's go in and let's just put a reflector under there and let's just do a headshot. I'm mm -hmm. just thinking we'll just go in and do a headshot. I go in and do a headshot. Oh my gosh. This woman is like fantastic for beauty yeah. headshots. Like our model, her name is MJ. And I take a couple shots. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're like, you're 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 like so on point with this beauty stuff. Because beauty headshot, it is a facial structure. Right. But it's a pose and an attitude in a certain way. And she's like coming up all these poses. I'm like, wait, give me two minutes. I took the octa, I put it behind her. Mm -hmm. aiming up at a 45 degree angle so I don't get lens flare. So that made a white background. Right. And then I took the big the big um, umbrella, uh, yeah. put it straight behind me. So I'm under it. It's so right, big, right. I'm standing up and shooting under the umbrella. Right. And that was it. And, and that's uh, where you got the other one. Yeah, right? let me see if I can get to it here. Hold on. There you go. Yeah, take a look. Boom. I mean, we, we shot for five minutes and I have 15, 20 shots. And, and she, awesome. she's just, yeah, she's just terrific. Can I come any bigger? There we go, and get a little bigger. She's just terrific. Her, I could like shoot beauty with her all day because she's just, her poses were so amazing and so great. So um, I want to show you this behind the scenes video. Oh, I have a couple other shots. We, we did, uh, hold on. I did that thing again where I hit the, it's not supposed to hit command, it's supposed to hit control, not my calendar. There you go, Photoshop. We did one of these. All right. Big, flowy, dressy thing. And then at the very end, we just did a simple portrait at the very end. Okay, so cool. so I have a behind the scenes video. I'm just gonna kind of walk you through it and then I'll, I'll be putting the full behind the scenes on YouTube and on my blog and everywhere on Friday. So this is the space right there. There's a the space that we, that's the, the theater, got a little time lapse going on. And uh, I didn't use all of these lights. I only used really two lights, uh, one as the main and one as the fill. That's the fill on the umbrella. There's Julio putting up a one, and I'm kind of saying, let's move it forward. That's what I was saying right there. There's Victor who's helping us out on the set, and we're getting all the set pieces in place. And Kathy Perepsky also helping us out on the shoot. And so here we are. There's Hendrika, our amazing uh, makeup artist. Just crazy. She's the best. And uh, we're getting ready in there. That's, they had a, I could do a photo shoot just in their makeup room. So you, look how far back I am. I'm shooting yeah. with a 70 to 200, the, and we're, we're getting our subject on the set, and you can kind of see the, the background. I'm shooting Tethered as always. Thank you, Tether Tools, for their great gear. And so basically, we're way back there. With the 70 to 200, I am uh, controlling the lights from on top of my, uh, and I'm like, look at all those feathers. I think it's cool seeing on these behind the scenes. Like now here we're getting setup. ready to do the beauty. Yeah. yeah. So look at the beauty. Now we're in. Now this is when I was shooting on that dark background, and this is when I said, "We gotta, we gotta flip this over." I mean, we shot for five minutes. And I'm like, I cannot believe. So we, we eventually did put the. There we go. The side. That's me. Do you see me standing, yeah, standing under it? Look how it. large yeah. it is. Now we tried the giant dress stuff, and what you have to do with the dress, it took three people, to literally, grab it and throw it into the air. So yeah, and that's how you got it all flowy like that. Yeah, yeah. I got it. We got it flowy. You flowy. know, we, we had a super high powered fan. A super high power fan won't do it. Look at that. Ooh, slow mo. There it is. Boom. You know, it was terrible a couple of times. It completely covered her. <laughs> like it just went and just. It was like you dropped it over her head. Anyway, she was she was just wonderful to work with. So patient and so so awesome. We really had a great crew from from beginning to end. And Christina who is on the chat today over there. She can't hear me because she has headphones on. She was the producer. She put the, helped yeah. put the whole thing together and uh, did a great job. It was the first time uh, for her producing one of my shoots, but she did awesome. 
She's over there. She gave me a thumbs up. I have her picture. I'm going to show you her picture in a few minutes just so you can know who, who's on the other side of the of the thing today. But uh, anyway, I just want to give a shout out to uh, the folks at, at Pro Photo and all the people that, you know, I like. I it, it took a ton of people and the companies and all in all to do that. Oh, yeah. um, and, and I wrote about this on my Spark page. And let me give you the address to my Spark page. So, you know, it's like bit.ly, but we have a custom one. It's kelby, K-E-L dot B-Y <laughs> slash Scott Kelby, that's me, underscore Pro Photo USA. And that was my, uh, that's where you can find my Adobe Spark page. The Spark page is up now. I will show it to you. So can you see that? Let's see. Yeah. So this is my Spark page, and it tells the whole story. And what I oh, did cool here... cool you walk through the whole thing. Yeah, I go walk. through the whole thing, how the concept... Here's Calibra's concept. Our little birdie got her wish to be human. Breaking out of her gilded cage, she was finally able to live the free and glamorous life she had watched so many live in this room before. So that was the, the concept behind it. And then the pictures. And then the behind-the-scenes. I have lots of behind-the-scenes and all that stuff. Then I talked about gravity because this is my first time using their backdrops. Their backdrops are just, I'm sold. And they're like their newest avid customer. Uh, and I, I showed you some shots like from my, my Lightroom grid there. And there's the, that beauty headshot. And I also showed you some, there's the setup. I explained the setup. And then the other dress. And I've got lots of behind the scenes, all kinds of stuff. And, and all about the team. And, and, be, and it's because, I said it right here, when, when it comes to fashion, fashion is not about the photographer. It's about the team. It takes a, a, a group of people to pull up. I'm not talking glamour. You can do that with two people. I'm talking about when you're actually going to try to do fashion. It, it's, there's a lot to it. Look at, look at Victor. Carrying that thing like it's styrofoam right over yeah. his head, throwing it right up over his head. Anyway, there's uh, and everybody's Instagram is on here. Everybody, you can follow everybody on there. And I'll be putting this on my blog, on my scottkelby.com blog on Friday. But you can go watch it at kel.by slash scottkelby underscore pro photo usa we try to make it as long as possible why do we use a bit link if we're going to write that big scott kelby underscore pro photo usa anyway but it's my first my first shoot with my new gear uh i gotta tell you the b1x's here's what i love about them right they're wireless they have no cords they have no battery pack or anything it's built mm -hmm. into the light yeah when you want to move something you just go like this and the whole thing moves the light moves everything moves i don't need to go like i don't have to ask assistance i just walk over right. and move it it is the fastest setting up that i just had a blast with an absolute blast you know how sometimes you wonder you're like is it really worth it you know you shoot one time you go now i get it i was the same way with a Tumi bag right so delta when i hit a million miles gave me a Tumi bag and I would never buy a Tumi bag because you know how much Tumi bag costs? Too much. Mine was $775. I could have spent $775. Can I tell you what? If I lost that bag, I would go buy that bag again. Once you get it, you're like, oh, I just thought it was expensive because it's expensive. No, really quality well, stuff. Well, after a while, it amazing. saves you so much time. Yeah. I've had that bag forever. Yeah. I hope I don't lose it. All right, well, we do have to go to a break. Should we? Yes, because I know that Jason's over there like, we got to go to a break. Oh, when but, we come back, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about photography etiquette. Ooh, you know? it's a doozy. Yes. Stick around. We'll be right. right back.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b h Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey. We're Guess back. Guess what? <laughs> We're back. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, man, everybody's watching yeah, today. Yeah, we got all over the world here. We got uh, Stephen Perry from Ontario, Canada saying hi. We got Stephen Todd from Scotland. We got Lars from Scotland. We've got uh, Abena from Bulgaria. Adnan from Iraq, Tibor, who's saying hello from Hungary. I read all your books and learned a lot from you. Thank you. Yay. I'm guessing that's you because I've never written, yeah. written any books. You've so. read books, though. Yeah. I've read them, yes. Uh, Mimo saying, hey, Scott. Hey. And then Rose Kieran saying, Rose hey. Rose Kieran. Rose, were you watching the show where I showed the awesome gifts you get? Rose got me an awesome mm -hmm. gift. I brought it on the show. I don't know if you saw it, Rose, but I did. Thank you very much for the wonderful gift. Hey, Mimo and I have an announcement next week. Oh, yeah? I can't. Monday. Big announcement. We have a big announcement Monday. Me and Mimo. Very cool. Secret announcement for Monday. Well, you want On to my show, blog. You want to show something first before we dive into yes, it? Yes, I do want to show something. Can you see my screen? Am I still connected to you? All right. This is Christina. There she I snapped this with my iPhone right before we went on the air. I said, hey, quick, look over here, which she was thrilled at, thrilled at the prospect of me taking a picture with no warning. But anyway, she's right over here to the right of us, and she is in our chat. She's moderating your comments and stuff. So everybody say hi to Christina. Hi, Christina. Mm -hmm. How are things? She talks to us, but we really, you know, she yells at mo us mostly and tells us to take breaks and stuff. Anyway, anyway but Christina well, was the producer of my shoot. Yeah, and yeah. speaking of yelling... That's really our topic. Yeah, our topic today is about etiquette for photographers. And let me tell you, uh, Eric and I both have stories. I, I, and and I, I, think, I think we need to talk about this because I think for some reason in the last few years, the, the etiquette for photography is breaking down in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. Eric was telling me a story about something that happened at a shoot over at Cape at the Cape. So, Eric, for those of you who, who aren't familiar with, with Eric's work, Eric does uh, rocket photography. So he does launches of SpaceX mm -hmm. and NASA and stuff. He also shoots for a European magazine uh, for aerospace, and he does all kinds of rocket-related stuff. Now... He gets access to shoot rockets. That is ridiculous. He's putting up remotes at the pad and all this kind of crazy stuff that you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get to. But that's his thing, and he does it really, really well. Well, thanks. So uh, anyway, tell us about it. He told me this story the other day. I'm like, no. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that, that's one of the – yeah, that's, a, that's definitely a, a story, the pad story, um, where, you know, uh, one thing – and it, every photographer can relate to this and just something we need to work on, and that is when you're in groups of photographers, usually what will happen is you will establish what I would like to call a line. And what it is is there's an imaginary line that goes, hey, we're not going to go in front of this because if anybody goes in front of this, we're going to ruin everybody's shot behind me. Right. But some people just don't care. So <laughs> what was funny with the, with the rocket, you know, is shooting rockets. We have a limited amount of time. We have to stake our rockets or our tripods into the ground. We have to set up all our cameras. So we're about 15 minutes in at one location. We've staked it out. We've we got the cameras staked in location. We're all in a row. And we're all in a row. There's this one guy who comes in 15 minutes later, and he just plops his camera right there about 20 feet in front of everybody. And then, you know, we started saying, hey, he just ignored us. Just ignored us. And it's like, you're just ruining it for everybody by doing that. I mean, come on. How do you do that? How yeah. do you just ignore? You, now, you got to realize when he says they stake it down, that doesn't mean like I'm staking it down in the... Like, doom, like they're doom. driving it because <laughs> they don't want their... You, you don't want it to blow to over. Blow yeah, over, yeah. right? And so you're literally taking stakes and nailing it to the yeah, ground. Yeah, so it's not like we can just move. I mean, we're committed. Now, I mean, like I said, uh, uh, fortunately for the shots, I think he didn't get anybody's telephoto. Because if you got into a telephoto shot, I mean, there's nothing you can do. But he's definitely in all of our wide shots. Everyone, all the five guys there, he's in all of our shots. Okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. So what, so what is the official etiquette? The, is the official etiquette, wherever the front line is, you don't go past the front line? Unless you ask to go past the front line. 
I think it's okay if you ask. Like if, if you, you went know? and said, and that, hey guys, and that goes can to, I, you know, know. I mean, that really goes uh, to the, the point of, you know, so I'd like to, you know, if we re rewind it, I'll tell another story that this was actually the catalyst of this episode was I came back from a cruise. I don't know if you remember we talked about this. I came back from a cruise, and that's where this, I do this, remember. Oh. this was born out of. And this was actually, with that scenario, I'm kind of like, well, that happens. That's, you know, professional photographers being a little. But here's the bigger thing with photographers is when you're in public settings with people, I think we need to do a better job about uh, being mindful of being, uh, what I say is blend in and don't be distracting. Right. So we were on a vacation, we're on a cruise, and we're in a theater watching a ice skating performance on one of Royal Caribbean ships. So it's nice, you know, and all that, and you're watching it. And then as it starts, you know, the show starts here, and I, my ears perk up because I'm hearing this shutter just ripping. I mean, just ripping like, like nine frames, frames a second nine, 10 frames a second. And it's a big one. It's either it's either a, a D5 or a 1DX. It's something yeah. I'm like, this is hefty. Like a sports camera. And I was like, okay, but then it doesn't stop. And it just keeps on ripping. And I'm like, where is that coming from? So now I spent time looking around. And then suddenly I caught it. There's a guy in the back row with a 1DX and a 200 to 400. And he's a a guy just on that's the cruise. That's a big lens. That's yeah, no, this no. Big. He was he was actually over the shoulder, and you were like in people's like he was in, he was in one guy's ear. I don't know how the guy didn't walk, like turn around and like say something. Any chance he was working for the cruise line? Well, or? that's what I I picked up later and, and ended up like um, looking and like he was just a person on the cruise. He He's wasn't just on working. But even if if you were working for the cruise, it would have been ten times worse. Yeah. Because then you're really disturbing everybody. I was sitting like 100 feet away. And this is the thing. I mean, I guess that's the point. It's just like you can take photographs, but don't take so many photographs that you just disrupt everybody around you. And you just have no concern for everybody around you. I felt really bad for those people watching the show because I was hearing it from about 100 feet away. Imagine that guy that was sitting there oh. where he's ripping them. And I mean, the camera right over his shoulder, Yeah, right over the shoulder. I'm looking for a shot. Here. And like that, that's like we you really you know, one of the things we really need to work on is being discreet. Um, just realize that it's not just about us. We have to work within that, because what happens is if we don't as a community do that, that's how we get a bad name. You know, and that's why they they don't allow people to shoot at certain times or they restrict uh you know photographers more the more we become a burden the more we're we as a photography community are restricted on shooting so that's my first thing uh for photographers is blend in and don't be distracting uh and be discreet and realize it's not all about you and your photography i know yeah. and you know what i i also think Number one, you're right. When people do stuff like that, it, it, it's bad on everyone. Uh, I, I did something. I, 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 number one, I think if you're just nice, if mm -hmm. the guy come up to yep. you guys when you were lined up and said, hey, guys, do you mind oh, if yeah. I set up over here? Is that okay? And, and you guys would have probably said, well, you know, get down low. Don't put your camera too high. You would have you would have worked with him in some way. And the worst you could have said is, no, hey, we were here first. Set up beside us, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, that, that would have been perfectly fine. Um, I had a situation where I did one of those bad photographer things. Oh, yeah? What was that? So I, I've told this story before, so forgive me if you guys have heard it. I was in Maine on vacation, and I was with my father-in-law, and we're just kind of cruising around, and we went to, uh, I think it's called Porpoise Cove. And it is a beautiful still water place for these fishing boats. It's, a, it's one of those idyllic... Mm -hmm. it, it's made for photography. Well, it's a still water night. It's beautiful. I'm looking for a place to shoot, and, and I see these houses and there doesn't appear to be any cars or anyone home or anything so mm -hmm. that doesn't excuse it i go down to the beach i'm walking down the beach there's a dock i look around is there anybody at the house the house looks all the lights are out nobody's here i'm just going to go on the dock i go on the dock i set up my tripod i take a couple of shots i turn around there's the owner and somebody else with him and they're like this is private property and i'm like mm -hmm. oh i did that thing you're not supposed to do and i felt like crap and i said I am so sorry. I didn't think anybody was home. And he goes, well, that doesn't make any difference. And he, he's right. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. He's right. It doesn't make it, you know. And I said, I, I'm so sorry. I'll pack up and I'll leave. And he said, nah, it's okay. You can go ahead and shoot. 
Yeah, but, but I think it's because of the attitude you met him with, right? Yeah, I right? felt terrible, and so I was you, like, you yeah. felt terrible. You sympathized. I know, but I was wrong in the first you place. Were wrong, I, yeah. I was wrong to go on that pier. Now, had I knocked on the door and said, "Hi, I'm a photographer on my vacation. Is there any chance that you might let me just shoot for a few minutes out there?" He'd probably say, "Yeah." Every time that I've asked, mm -hmm. you know, if you're if you're nice, you know, most people want to help you. Mm -hmm. If you say, hey, can you help me out with this? I'm, I'm from out of town, and you've just got this beautiful view out here. Is there any way you'd let me just walk back there for five minutes to take a couple of shots? What would he say? No. Hey, every once in a while, you might say no, and that's their right to say no. Right. But I, I think that's what's missing. I, I think that just asking, in most cases, just saying, is it okay if I shoot here? Do you mind if I set up here? Is it mm -hmm. all right? Well, I think most people will go, sure. But what happens is I'm not the first photographer on that guy's dock. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got there, he came out of the house mad, and I don't blame him. I mean, I don't know how I would feel. I, actually, I've seen this happen in my own house. We, we live on a lake, and I'll look in the backyard. People are fishing off of, <laughs> off of my property, mm -hmm. and, and people or kids are playing back there. I don't ever say anything. I never go out there and go, what are you kids doing on my lawn? Though I want to. Mm -hmm. No, I don't care. But, uh, but there are people that do care. There are people that right. are very, you know, stay off my lawn kind of thing. But uh, uh, we, we have to take a break. I can't mm -hmm. believe it's already break time, but it yeah. is. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to hear your comments. We're getting, um, oh yeah, we're getting uh, lots of comments here and stuff. So we'll we'll be talking to you guys in a minute. I've got a couple of stories to tell, including a cheeky Nando related story. Ooh, Stick around, nice. cheeky Nando, cheeky cheeky Nando. A couple of really big benefits of being critiqued. One, it tells you what you're doing well. Two, it tells you what you're not doing well and areas to focus on. I think three, it tells you potentially how the stories you're attempting to tell are being seen and shared by others, including stories you maybe even didn't know you were telling. And then the last thing I think it does is the more you get critiqued, the better you are at critiquing others, and then you can help other people really move their photography forward as well. And really that's what this class was about, was taking an established methodology that has been in existence for almost 70 years now that we know works so to bring that kind of structure down here I think is going to be helpful for people who are soliciting feedback to know how to ask for it and for those people giving feedback to give them the tools to feel like they can really respond to anybody who's looking for help. I'm Daniel Gregory come and check out my latest class on kelbyone.com. Compositing, especially doing this kind of family portraiture, is taking it to the next level. How do you make something impossible possible and believable? Compositing seems really hard. How do you make that you know, look real? This is really about making something more imaginative. You're taking your imagination and turning that into the photograph. Uh, it's not that hard, especially when you're doing something like this class, where it's all in frame. Then it becomes more about technique. You get variety, you overshoot more than you need. Then it becomes a formula of set steps where, okay, you make a basic selection, you paste in place, do some masking, and it's not using a whole lot of advanced tips to make things very seamless. So that's the idea behind this class, is making the impossible possible and making it really fun the entire time. I'm Brett Malley. Please come take a look at my latest class on compositing on kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign oh. up today. Hey, we're back, and we got <laughs> yes, like, we a are. lot of comments. <laughs> we got to read here. But, um, you know, one thing that uh, a lot of people were asking is about this T-shirt. Um, this is actually something uh, from Photoshop World. Yeah. So we did something on Photoshop World years ago where we did a, a uh, Lightroom Photoshop party thing, and yeah. uh, uh, it was funny like that. But if you wanted to buy that T-shirt, it is in the community. If you go to Kelby One and then go under Community and then go uh, Apparel, um, we actually sell it in our store. So Yeah, we have all kinds of like Kelby One yeah. swag there you yep. can buy. Yep. So that's on the Kelby One member site yep. under Community and then under Apparel. Apparel. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So there you go. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of uh, question or comments and questions coming in. So uh, uh, Bruce is saying uh, photographers getting close to wildlife is another problem. It's not good for the animals, which is true. I mean, that's and that that goes down to um, like the point of uh, respecting um, the people and property around you. 
Uh, and that's another thing that that's a tip from that I had written down was uh, respecting the people and property around you and, and animals the same as people, you know. So um, when you do that, you ruin it for other people. Did you um, read Bruce's comment there? Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at something. I, I missed it. You read Kiss? Yeah, comment? yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. And then um, so a good example on that is uh, – like uh, I had that where I was out doing a, a shoot in the snow and what it was is one of the guys that was with us just started taking off in the snow. And here's the problem. When he's taking off in the snow, he's leaving footmark, 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 oh. footmark. And it's a beautiful, pristine snow that he just ruined. And we're yelling up to him. What are you thinking? Come on. Hold on. We can't. We need to get the shot. And he's just walking and he just kept on walking. And it's like that. That's just. You got to be mindful again of the surroundings and not ruining it, and also not trampling on stuff that you shouldn't be trampling on. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's a couple other questions here. Yep. Hey, I want to tell you a quick story. I said I had a Cheeky Nando related story. Yeah. So, because this is a photographer's etiquette thing. Yes. So, Cheeky Nando and I are driving around in Lisbon. Cheeky Nando lives in, in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have a picture. Yeah, right there. See? Look, it's me and Cheeky Nando in Lisbon. That's me and Chiki Nando. Oh, you're it, eating at that cool place. We're eating at Time that, Out, yeah. Time Out Lisbon. Amazing, great, great place. We had so much fun. It was such a, a memorable night. I will remember it always. Anyway, Chiki Nando and I are driving around, and we go down this street, and I see it, and I go, I want to come back here on this street and shoot. Mm. So one morning, we get up, and I'm getting up literally at, at before dawn because I wanted to get the streetcar coming around this curve, and Chiki Nando and I had just driven over the day before, and I was like, where is this? And he said, this is right down the street from our hotel. I said, great. I'm going to come back to here. I went and looked on the map. It literally, walk out the door of the hotel, come down, take a left. It's right there. So I decided I'm going to get up in the morning. Now, there are other people who were watching this show. Now, they may not be watching it today, but there are regular watchers of this show who are also with us in Lisbon. It was like 11 of us. Mm -hmm. So it was Piotr. It was Ravi Pisco. And so we go to this, this location to get the shot. Now... I only have a few minutes, literally, to get the shot. I walk up, I set up. Now, um, because my photo walk was, this is the morning of my mm -hmm. photo walk in Lisbon. So I have to, the, the trolley's open at seven. My photo walk is at nine. And I have to get to my so photo walk. you're like, walk. I got this window. I, I need to get the shot. I got this window, and then yep. I got to get the shot. So I get up there. Here's the shot I'm trying to get. This is the shot. Let me go bigger with it. Well, here's yeah. the Yeah, on the screen. There, there we go. go. So this is the shot I'm trying to get on this little curve. Now, what you don't see here is both Piotr and, and uh, um, Robbie Pisco walking down the street. I'm like, now, here's because they're my friends, I'm saying stuff like this. Piotr, get your butt out of my, I'm yelling at him, get your butt out of my shot. Look, whoever's idea it was for the shot, you can't go cry. You can come and be a part of the shoot. You can shoot, but you Don't can't walk in it. front. Yeah. Piotr, Pisco, <laughs> walking in front of Dude, I got pictures. I kid you not, I was looking for it. I got pictures of them. I have that and them in it. Like, I'm having to clone them out on my shots. I'm like, you're it. So whoever shot says, hey, let's go shoot at the beach. Hey, let's go shoot here. And you go with that person. You can shoot, too. But you can't walk in front. What is it with us walking in front? So yeah. Larry, read Larry's from Chicago's yeah. comment here because I got a good uh, comment about so, it. So Larry's saying, um, how about the smartphone user who sees you and then tries to get as close to you as possible because you have a DSLR, you must be getting a good shot. Larry, we were in San Marco Square in Venice. We are, photo we, are, we are videotaping. This was with my camera crew, videotaping Mimo Madani. So Mimo is there, mm -hmm. and Mimo is teaching a class for Kelby One. So Mimo is wearing a mic. We've got a big camera rig. we got all this set up and, and all this stuff. And a guy comes up. I kid you not. <laughs> guy comes up. Let's say that you are Juan yep. from our camera crew. This guy comes up, and he's like this with Juan. <laughs> He's taking, he's like, creepy. he's like taking pictures of Juan. And I'm like, do you, mom, do you remember this guy? It was crazy. And I'm looking at him like, 
Uh, do you not see us? We're people. You're standing here. And he's like, he's taking, he's taking a selfie stick and he's going in front of Juan. And I'm like, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And this happened to me. Uh, in fact, I, okay. I can actually find the picture of the guy, yep. I think. I, uh, Juan and I are standing on, uh, looking down the bridge of size. Now, we mm -hmm. went to a secret place that Mimo knew about. It's right. a secret place, but I mean, it's a place that nobody else was there. Like, Mimo, there's 500 people shooting the bridge of size, and Mimo goes, come with me. We get there. You know who's there? Me and Juan. Nobody else. And, and Mimo's saying, stand there, stand there. We're shooting there. Of course, somebody sees us. And the guy literally comes with his phone right in front of me. Like, I'm sitting here trying to shoot the shot. I'm waiting for a gondola to be right in the perfect yep. place. And he pulls right into your shot. He walks directly in front of me. I look at Juan, I'm like, what just what happened? Is, what has happened? <laughs> well, whoever's in front. And by the way, Piotr from London, who yep. is the guy, goes, yeah, now I'm the bad yeah. guy. Yes, Piotr, you were the bad guy. That's why I was yelling at you. <laughs> when you're at somebody else's shoot, you're not supposed to run in front. Well, and speaking of, Frank brings up an even better one. I notice this nowadays. Worse than that are iPad folks who block everything that you're holding with their iPad. When they hold it they up like, like, like this, this and they're shooting, I just want to <laughs> scream. Like, can you take more space up? But they're, they're, we need to have some kind, of a, some kind of a rule. Rule number one, Piotr. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that runs in front of the person that you're going to the shoot with. Now, Piotr, I love shooting with you. You're an awesome guy. It's great hanging out with you for 99.9% .9 of my time in Lisbon. But that 1%. But now you know. You're lucky they don't allow guns in Lisbon. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right, look at this. Tom, Tom S. says, sounds like people at Costco. They're clueless and they step in front of people pushing heavy yep. carts. Yeah. Look at Michael's got a good comment, yep. though. Michael's saying, I, well, and this goes back to yeah, what we were talking about earlier. I asked for permission why in Santorini and was given access. Politeness works. I really do believe that. Like, yeah. I really do. Like, like, and that goes to the point, and that's what I, wh one of the points that I had was, Ask for permission beforehand. Goes back to your thing with sure. the doc. Ask for permission beforehand. Um, uh, most people are willing to be agreeable. However, if somebody is not agreeable, just say, yeah, oh, okay, and walk away. Yeah. Like, you have to respect what they say. So if they say no, walk away. Yeah, it means no. But what would you think? Like 98% of the time, 99% of the time when you've asked? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably in that. You know what? Most people are nice, and most people uh, also, it is how you ask. Yeah. It is how you ask. And, and you know what's interesting? If you want to get somebody to do something, ask them to help you. Can you help me out? Mm -hmm. I'm from out of town. I would love to do this. Because people do like to help. And if you say, will you help me out? They're most likely going to go, sure. Doesn't cost them anything. It's easy. Just, it's just giving permission. Right. But if you say, can I, can I shoot on your dock? No. You, you have to be really nice, and you have to, you have be, to be relatable. And, and, and you also have to present it in a way where they know if they say no, you're going to be okay with it. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and there's a lot of that. I, I'm going to go see if I can find. I, I actually have the Yeah, shot. and along those lines, um, you, you don't want to be taking people's photograph and then sharing it without their permission, too. Like, you know, a lot of people. And now, I, I understand with street photographers, they'll be like, well, I'm not going to do that. But That's from, street photography is based on shooting other people yes. that don't know you're shooting them. Yes. But for most scenarios, like, you have to be willing to ask those people and then respect them, you know, because there's a lot of cultures that just don't like their picture being taken. So you have to be kind of, you know, mindful and respectful of that. Hey, we're going to take a break in a second, but since Mark Rodriguez brought this comment up, because I want to talk about this other thing, I was going to talk about this next topic mm -hmm. anyway. So Mark said, Hilmar Smith had a situation uh, with her booth at Photoshop World. Yep. So Hilmar uh, designed one of the photo shooting booths at Photoshop World, and it was amazing. And she had a problem yeah. with a guy who was basically hogging the model at her booth. He took it over like, this is my shoot now. <laughs> and so what Mark says is, when you're at a free shoot or a workshop, don't hog the model. Get a few shots and move out of the way. And oh, what yeah. he should have done was get a few shots, wait, and wait until there's nobody else waiting in line if you really want to shoot with the model and then yeah. go back and shoot again. Now, the reason why I brought this up, besides he, Mark makes a very valid point, was one of the things I wanted to mention today on the show was Hilmar did a guest post on my blog on July 11th, and this is it right here. Mm -hmm. And guys, this is a story. I don't care if you're a photographer or not. Everyone should read this. 
first off, her pictures are amazing. She is a wonderful, oh, yeah. wonderful photographer. And she does the best selfies. She does like, I wouldn't call them selfies. They're pictures of herself. Self-portraits. They're self-portraits. They are not selfies. But her stuff is amazing. But her story, it will make you laugh. It will make you cry. It will make you smile. It is really one of those, whether you're a photographer or not, it's an inspirational story. Uh, it, it's a story about life. It's about photography. It's about everything. But it is definitely worth checking out. So this is at scottkelby.com. Her post was back on July 11th, and I wanted to point it out today because uh, she's a great person, an incredible talent. She's so good in Photoshop. She's such a good photographer. She's so creative. She's just an, an amazing person all the way around. Hey, we've got, um, oh, good. I see some good comments coming yep. in. Stick around. We've got some really good comments, and we have some other things we want to talk about on the same topic of etiquette photographers. Stick around. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We're live here on The Grid. I don't think printing has ever been more important than it is today. I think people are surprised by the power of Lightroom's printing. Uh, from Lightroom 1.0, the first time I started printing in Lightroom and realized how powerful it is, I'd never printed in Photoshop again. I don't want people to get surprises when they get their print. I don't want them to look at it, and I don't want it to look too dark. I don't want to look to have the colors off. I don't want to have it wrong. So I, I really focus on how to get predictable prints every single time. And it's really nuts and bolts. It takes you through all the things. We're gonna talk about how to deal with banding, how to do soft proofing, the misconceptions, all this kind of stuff. And we're gonna talk about sharpening. There's capture sharpening, creative sharpening, output sharpening. You gotta do them all if you really wanna get that legendary sharpness that you see in other people's prints. If you've never printed with Lightroom's print module, you are going to fall in love with it. This class is gonna take you from beginning to end and show you exactly how to make beautiful prints in Lightroom Classic. Why is this class important? It's important because if you don't learn the business side of photography, then you're not gonna excel. What we're teaching is business basics. And so if you are a photographer, if you are an artist, if you have a desire to start a business in any way, this class is for you. They wonder why they're not getting any clients and they're not marketing themselves. So you have to learn who the who and the what and the why, and then you have to do the work and market yourself. There are so many really, really talented artists that go out of business all the time, and they don't go out of business because they're not good at their art. They go out of business because they don't understand business. And so if you want to turn what you're doing into a career that is sustainable over the long term, you absolutely need to understand how to build a brand um, and then how to use that brand in your marketing and everything you do. I think that this class is for anyone who wants to actually make this into something that's a real career. I'm Elena S. Blair. And I'm Sandra Cohn. And come check out our class on kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna. Did you notice how nice their black and whites were in that oh, ad yeah. that, 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 for that class, Elena yeah. and uh, Elena and Sandra. Sandra thank you. Um, I'm just not. My brain is just. Yeah, it's okay. But they're the it quality. I don't mean the, the picture, the people. Yeah, they're, they're no, very nice photos. The but their black and white yeah. conversion is like spot the, on. Very, very nicely done. A couple yeah. things I want to mention. I will be in Washington D.C. on Friday. Uh, August 17th, so come out and spend the day with me learning Lightroom. It will be lots of fun. Go to kelby1live.com. I hope to see you in Washington. It's going to be fun. It's one of my last mm -hmm. Lightroom seminars for the year, so I hope you'll come and check it out. I'm launching a is. new tour at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center, and uh, hundreds of photographers will be there. You want to be there, too, so sign up now. You can save money and stuff. Okay, so that's that's uh, that was one brief thing. Also, two other things I wanted to mention earlier. Uh, the there's a giveaway. So I shot that whole fashion shoot with a Profoto B1X. We're doing a giveaway with those guys. We are actually doing a giveaway yeah. where you can win a Profoto B1X and a reflector and all this stuff. It's about $2,400 worth of stuff, and it's a promotion that we're doing with the folks from Profoto. I will give you the address that it's at because I happen to have it right here. It's bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y, slash win Profoto, P-R-O-F-O-T-O. So bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y, slash win Profoto. 
All you have to do is enter. You don't have to. It's not a competition. You don't have to send in photos. Mm -hmm. You just go, I want to win, and you're entered, and maybe you'll win. Somebody will go. win for sure. And you know what? We're going to be watching the grid and go, here's somebody. We're going to name their name. Why not you, right? Yeah. So go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash win pro photo do it right now and go enter the second thing is every time whatever equipment i'm using i'm always training on it and so in two weeks i'm doing a class on how to use the b1x is on location cool so i'm always yeah. that's my thing whatever i'm using that's what i'm teaching so i'll be teaching that i'm very excited and so much more and so much more like travel stuff you'll see weird and you'll see weird like tech stuff like from B&H and Amazon and stuff that... Well, you even have tips on that travel class on like um, uh, converters and just different size items to kind of save space. Oh, yeah. I talk yeah. about how to... how to Because we went over with, a lot of that stuff. With and that's TSA, really cool. uh, yeah. regulations, international travel, getting what happens if they take your bag, all kinds of... I got all kinds of strategies... Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't realize that they just think you just make it, but like you've you've planned out exactly what the strategies are for people. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I have strategies. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we got some giveaways today too. I mentioned we're doing this fabulous think tank bag that we have over here. We're also giving away a fifty dollar gift card to Lens Pro to go. Uh, they rent lenses and bodies and anything else that you need, and I've rented from them many, many, many times. Oh, yeah. I rented a tilt shift lens from them last time. They're the best. Mm -hmm. Great, great folks. We're also giving away the fabulous, the stupendous Victoria. Pavlov, digital artist, author, Photoshop world instructor, Victoria. This this is for a one hour online class one on one mm -hmm. with her. Yep. And she teaches digital painting and she knows everything about Photoshop. So uh, if you ever wanted to go, man, I wish somebody would just answer my questions. Yeah, like one on one. You will. And of course, Victoria's a doll. She's not only is she incredibly talented, but she's wonderful. We're gonna give that to somebody. We're gonna give away a copy of my book that is on press right now. The ebook is available. The print book is on press. It's called How Do I Do That in Lightroom Classic. It's brand new and it's for the brand new latest version of Lightroom and what else? That's it. That's all we're giving away. Well, but isn't that no and where do they wait? Oh. Wait. Take that off screen. Thank you. Come on, platypod. It was so small, you don't even it know so it was small, there. It was hidden behind me. We're giving away a platypod ultra, the greatest little device in the world. Will that be in my class tomorrow? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. We're giving away one of these, a platypod ultra, and it's big That's brother. That's a travel photo photographer's this secret is weapon. The, this is That's the travel it. photographer's secret weapon right here. So anyway, not the ball head, the thing below it. This thing. That's going to be in my class tomorrow. I like the way I moved it right out of camera and poor Juan's trying yeah. to like capture it. Anyway, speaking of Juan, can we pull up Juan's Instagram real quick? Underscore Juan Alfonso. I want to show you a picture of Juan's that particularly makes me mad. Look at the one right in the middle. Can you click on the one in the middle? This is where we were standing. Juan's getting this great shot, and I'm yelling about a guy standing in front of me. Mm -hmm. This is where we were right here. Where Juan, where the That's guy walked Juan was in front of me. Elbows. There's 200 photographers in the bridge to the left, and it's just me and Juan by ourselves right there. Juan starts throwing elbows. Anyway, Juan yep. pushed the guy in the water. Yeah. Anyway, go follow Juan on Instagram, underscore Juan Alfonso. One of the cool things that Juan does is he shares a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff of what we're doing here. Yeah, you can see, like, Kelby upcoming Juan. classes, oh, yeah. upcoming shoots that we're doing. And Juan travels around yeah. and does all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, yeah, you can see there's... Uh, they were in Lake Tahoe area, San Lake Francisco. Tahoe. Yeah. So wherever yeah. we're taping, Juan is there. Juan there was go. not at the fashion shoot because he was banned from the fashion shoot. So isn't that weird he was banned? Yeah. That yeah. is weird. All right, some I comments. I believe it. So we got comments. We got Kevin Scott coming in. Uh, Kevin Scott saying uh, when, you, um, when they give you permission to shoot on their property, follow up uh, when done uh, by offering uh, to send a nice print. Which is always that a is, great idea. That is so great. Because it not only it helps us all. It because, opens the door for the next photographer. Yes. I mean, and that's really what it comes down to is, you know, uh, really just making sure that when you're you are representing all photographers when you go into situations like that. So if you're a jerk, they think all photographers are jerks. And then you're we're never gonna get to shoot yep. on that dock. Nope. By the yeah. way, I, I'm sorry I was texting during the show. Kathy Perevsky says, I have a few questions about your location shoot for that B1 class. When's a good time to give you a quick ring? I wrote back, after the grid. <laughs> Not like, you know, from 4 to 5 on Wednesday. 
not a great time. Uh, but great, great comment there, Kevin. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, and then Jock's photo saying um, iPads are not allowed on helicopter tours. Phones maybe, by the way, if you're on a helicopter tour with closed windows, do not wear light or bright clothes. Uh, they can reflect in everybody's pictures. Um, and then uh, Noelle Henderson is saying, um, I had a lady walk in front of me at a wedding, and she told me to hold on and, and let her take the top. So I simply just rested my camera on her shoulder and asked her kindly to stand still. <laughs> now, can I tell you something about that? So when I shoot a, when I shoot a wedding, I don't shoot many weddings because they're yeah. it's very very hard to be it's a wedding hard. photographer. It is hard, and it and yeah. it, and I take a crew when I do a wedding. I, I use basically three second shoots. Yeah. I, I I really do it in a big way, but I take it very very seriously. Um, my, I have I have a for me to shoot your wedding. You have to agree that it is the wedding ceremony itself, not the reception. The wedding cere ceremony itself is unplugged. So the bride and groom have to ask the people in their invitations, this is an unplugged wedding. We want you to enjoy the wedding. We have four professional photographers covering the wedding. Please don't use your phones. Don't shoot video. Don't shoot stills. Just relax and enjoy the wedding for a change. So that's what I say. If, if you'll do an unplugged wedding, then I'll mm -hmm. shoot. But if they go, no, no, we want everybody to shoot. Well, I'm, like, I'm not the photographer. So that is one of my stipulations because mm -hmm. what happens is, and it's, it's terrible. If you don't have an unplugged wedding, yeah. everyone, you have 30, 40 people standing in the aisle as the brides. Like you're trying to get the bride and they're stepping out in front of you. You're yeah. responsible. You're, you're financially responsible to get a certain, certain shots. And you literally have cousins and uncles and friends and people that don't even know literally stepping out into but them. i've been to the weddings like that where they are unplugged where they i've actually They're had beautiful. uh when people hand hand you the card and they have a little card and they're talking about it and yep. everybody you know once you get that card you respect it but when you do that it is it's very refreshing because you're like I, what do i i i mean these guys are here professionally shooting the wedding yeah. what can i get it's going to be so you shoot much at the reception. Yeah. We've got the, we have the wedding. Hey, yeah. we only have a few seconds left to go on the show. We want to tell you where to go to enter the contest because the yeah. contest is important. Go to kelby1.com slash contest. You have to tell us what you want to win. So besides giving yeah. us your name and address in the little field, say, I want to win the think tank bag. I want to win the hour with Victoria. I want to win the book. I want to win the platypod ultra. So there you go. And then make sure you tell us you're not a robot. Make sure you tell us you're not a robot because we fear that you are a robot. Mm -hmm. And people win every single week all over the world. Yay. We haven't had a robot win yet. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention just real quick. We're going to go real quick. Uh, so I went to the um, to Moab, got up one morning, mm -hmm. walking through the dark with, with flashlights. It's just so early. No one's there. We actually get to the arch. It's not delicate arch. It's the other arch, the golden arch. Yeah, that, that arch. They had fries everywhere. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> McDonald's. Like the other arch. We get there, and literally, I, and I'm not making this up, there were 75 or 80 photographers already there when I got there at 5-something in the morning. And let me tell you, everybody is, is throwing elbows. Some, uh, like a tour group showed up after us, and they started working it. It was almost a fight. You, sh you should not. Number one, you don't set up in front of people. Number two... You have to respect the people that were more disciplined than you were. They were there first, yeah. There were 60, 70 photographers in place when I got there. I did not get the ultimate shooting spot because I got up at 4.30 instead of at 3.30. Those people were there. When I got there at 5-something in the morning, it was packed, mm -hmm. and that is on me. I don't need to go and get in front of somebody Step in front of somebody, elbow somebody, or move somebody. We have to show basic respect. Mm -hmm. Photography etiquette simply means being aware of the other people around you. Mm -hmm. When people walk in front of you and take a shot, when that guy set up his tripod. Yeah. Uh, I was on a tour boat in Norway, and a, a guy stood in the very front of the boat, the very bow of the boat. Is it the bow? Yeah. Very bow of the boat, stood there and just stood. He would take pictures with his phone. A couple... Two, two women right there. So they are blocking the entire front of the boat. We pull into this giant fjord. You want to take a picture? They are completely blocking it. Bad chairs, but they're standing. Take your pictures. 
and sit down because there's 70 people behind you yeah. all trying. Yeah, that, and you're talking about being like, aware of that's yeah. what it is. It's just be aware. It's being aware and being kind. We yes. have one second left. Being aware and being kind. Now, that doesn't just go for photography. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to do all the time is yeah, exactly. to just be aware and be kind. But especially just for proper photographers. Proper etiquette. Right. You know why? We're all trying to do the same thing. If you're in that great shot, once you've got it, why don't you go, all right, someone need to get in here. I've seen that happen. Yeah. I've seen that happen many times where a photographer says, ah, you know what? I got my shot. I already yeah, got the I'm shot. Good. Somebody want to get in here and they're like, I would love to, you know. And, and I've had lucky situations where things opened up or somebody just said, hey, you want to get in here, you know. Yeah. Help each and other it's that, out. It's that paying it forward, too, yeah. like we were talking about. Like that will then rub off on somebody else, which then yeah. rub off on somebody else. And that's how we, that, and we, we need to be, if we're photographer, photographers out there, we need to be a better example than the people with the iPads and people with the iPhones yep. who are getting in and getting everybody shot. Like, All right. I have the one bigger. last thing we got to go because we're not supposed to run over, but we're yes. running over by one minute. But I'm going to do it really, really quick. Super, super quick. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. Hold on. Right. I want to show you a shot and tell you a brief little thing right uh, here. Let me open it in Photoshop so you can see it. And we'll make it big. And uh, I blew it. That's close enough. Here we go. We hire, I hired this model for our workshop with Mimo in Venice. We, we rent the outfit. We do the whole thing. We go downstairs at the end, so she's posing outside as well. Well, when we're posing outside, all kinds of people start coming up to shoot her because it's not carnival time, and she's in a carnival outfit and the mm -hmm. whole place. But here's the thing. If anybody walks up and says, do, do you mind if I take a picture? If they would just ask, I would walk them up front and go, here, take, yeah, absolutely, right here. Just ask. Be kind. Because if you walk up and you start taking pictures, we resent it. Oh, yeah. But if you said, hey, I, this looks awesome. Do you mind if I take a picture? Oh, no, sure, go ahead. Right? That would be your default answer. Not like, mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry, this is a professional shoot. Anyway, guys, just keep that in and mind. And you're going to have that one person that's going to say that. Every no. once in a while, you'll get a jerk. But you know what? Life is full of them. Yeah. So not life is not full of them. Life has them. Most yes. people are really nice except for one. But everybody else is really, really nice. And Jason's not that nice either. <laughs> but besides Juan and Jason, Juan and Jason and Christina, everybody else is very nice. All right. Christina, thank you for your moderation. You were very Speaking moderate of. today. Juan, <laughs> peace. Jason, thank you. Ron, thank you for all the magic you're working back there in streaming land. And we'll see you guys next week on The Grid. And thanks to you, Mr. Kuna, the real rocket man. Kuna, D-Cats in the hat. Don't get in the jib shot. Don't get in the jib shot. <laughs>